Welcome back, everyone. Jeff Dye's Friendship Podcast, episode 83. Um, super excited. This week we invite well, a guy I've been calling my little brother for a long time, Patrick Moot. Uh, Patrick Moot is a fantastic man. We'll hear all of his story, but one thing we should note, uh, he just recently uh, survived cancer. He's uh, in remission, which is great. Um, kind of a new development, so he's kind of had this new awakening experience in life. I was super happy to have him on the podcast. I love him to death. I don't get to spend as much time with him as, I, as I'd as like, but the reason I uh, the reason I know him is because of his older brother, Brian Moot, who is an awesome, 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 awesome man that I love, who I also don't get to see as often as possible uh, as I'd like. Anyways, you guys will love this episode. It's very fun. If you want to watch this episode, or if you already are, that means you went to patreon.com uh, slash Jeff Die and you subscribed. Uh, for a small fee, you get uh, to watch every podcast episode as soon as it comes out, and you also get free tickets to all my stand-up comedy club shows. This weekend, Patreon subscribers, um, you can see me in uh, Zanies in Chicago. I'm going to be at the Old Town Comedy Club, and on the weekend, the Rosemont Zanies. Uh, for tickets to that, just go to zanies.com, or if you, uh, if you already are a Patreon subscriber, just Hit me up on Patreon, and you will get free tickets to those shows. Uh, also, free meet and greet if you're a Patreon subscriber. Otherwise, just come have some laughs. Otherwise, uh, if you're listening to this episode on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts, uh, throw us a subscribe. We would love that. We would uh, That would be it, and that's free. It's free to do. Anyways, we love you guys. Enjoy the episode. I'll see you when it's over. And we're in. Hey! Welcome back to Jeff Dye's Friendship Podcast. Um, what a week. What a fun, fun week I've had. It's been mm. a good sports week. It's been a good uh, okay, it's too. been a good travel week. It's been a it's been a good uh, money week. We gotta catch up with Tone Bear on your uh, on your live stream. How'd mm. that go? It was awesome. It was hard. Yeah. Like I, I was feeling it by like three AM. Yeah, very sleepy. I was like, ugh. Yeah, I was trying to like, I was like, and I was like, I, I didn't know what to play at that point because like I was I was playing uh, Zelda on Super Nintendo for a long time. I never well, would you switch it up for like one hour each hour? No, no, no. So like I started with like Crash Bandicoot because nice. I thought JC was coming at twelve thirty, but it was miscommunication. He was leaving by twelve thirty. Okay, so he showed up at like ten thirty. Oh, so just real quick for those of you who don't know, uh, Tony did a live stream to raise money for kids. I don't know what the specific thing yeah, is. Yeah, so it's, the charity is called Extra Life, and we raise money for Children's Miracle Network hospitals. Children's so, Miracle. So Network we were we were hospitals. raising for uh, specifically for Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. So if you donated money to uh, Tony, he was going to play video games for twenty four hours straight yeah. at my place at the Fortress of Solid Dudes. Yeah, and then. Um, and then the money would go to to that good cause. And a lot of people, it sounded like they chimed in. But yeah. he was going to have like guests, people from this podcast, people that we've just made friends with over time, mm -hmm. comedians, um, yeah. you know, also Twitch people, I think. Yeah, it ended up just being JC and, and Clayton. Clayton. And okay. then I played online with the rest of my, who run the channel with me. Yeah. We played some Halo online together. JD later. Witherspoon was supposed to come, but yeah. unfortunately his dad passed away. Rest in peace, John Witherspoon, which yeah. was really sad. We're, we're thinking about you, bud. I, uh, I'm sure you shot him some texts. I shot yeah. him some texts. Horrible news. That was the worst thing that happened this week, but yeah. the stream still went well. Yeah, it was great. We raised... Uh, about eleven hundred dollars. Nice. Um, you can still donate till December too. The, yep. the fundraiser's still up because um, we did have a goal of of twenty five hundred. Mm -hmm. um, I s originally was going to set a goal of a thousand, but I was like, I'm gonna shoot for the stars. Yeah. And then we broke that. So sure. Um, so that was great. But yeah, I started playing, and then JC came over, and we started playing some Donkey Kong Country. Nice. And he's just a riot. And uh, I do have the uh, like the footage of the stream too that I will be cutting up into like pieces. Nice. Yeah. On the YouTube like channel. So like reel, if you yeah. never got to see it, you should cut that up soon so people can still donate before December. Yeah, definitely. I will. I want to watch um, all twenty four hours. Yeah, That's what I, I want to go head first, yeah. straight up. It was it, all the way through. It was crazy. So then and JC hung out for a little bit. He left. So I went back to playing. <laughs> He'll stay up. Crash. Yeah. 
<laughs> for 24 Another, hours. You can donate. Here's the second, watch it straight the second marathon is I'm going to watch the 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, that's what and I you said. Can Pat donate that. That's Pat's idea. Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah. And then I played Zelda for a long time because I never played that game before. So I played it for like hours and Which hours. Which Zelda? Uh, the one on Super Nintendo, Link to the Past. Was it fun? Super fun. Okay. I love it. Um, did you beat these games or did you just I, play until you were I done? I didn't beat Zelda because that game's like forever long. I, was well, trying I also to, think like it would take longer than 24 hours to beat any one of those games. If I had a yeah. guide for that game and I knew exactly where to go, but I was trying to do it without a guide. So right. I got like halfway through the game. Um, I did beat Crash Bandicoot. That should be a rule for you forever. No go, no no guide Tony. What a nickname. Yeah, but... So, no guide Tony. Yeah, but... <laughs> but at a certain video game nickname, that's great. Yeah, but at a certain point, I was just like... I stopped playing at like 2 a.m. because I was just not getting any... I, it was like an hour and a half. And yeah. I literally made zero progress. People are logging off the stream like, this is boring. Yeah, He's so not. then I started playing uh, MLB, <laughs> which was interesting. Then so more strangers started popping in because they'd yeah, see it on the... Well, it's fun to watch. Yeah. I'd rather watch a baseball game Yeah, because I get how it works and everything. Yeah. Then watching some guy try to figure out a puzzle in right. one of the dungeons of Zelda. Yeah, like, that's exactly like... what was, was happening. But uh, it was like 3 a.m. and I was like so Dragon. sleepy. I was bad. Yeah. I was like, I couldn't hit. I was like, I was like oh my God, I'm tired. Um, but uh, I love it. I'm glad the stream went it was, well. Yeah, Let's it, start doing this more awesome. often. We I should know. do one a month or something. I, I, that's what I want to do. Also, like, it was so great. You're going to get the truth from me right this second. Uh, but you might hear me lie for, about this later. You might have heard me lie about it in the past. Uh, I have never once in my life, as a, as a child to all the way to this age, have ever stayed up 24 hours. I've really? never done that. Hmm. Never once. And I think I've lied about it. I was like, oh, dude, we used to stay up. But I think that I still got a nap in or I got like, yeah. I slept on a plane or there was like a 45 minute chunk. Right. So yeah. I don't think I've ever done what you did. Even that, even from like a sleep. Yeah. And it's not great. Not a great thing to do. Usually like, uh, cause there's this extra life. There was like thousands of people doing this, mm -hmm. right, all at the same time. So, for example, like the team that I was a part of, team like I was helping raise money for, was kind of funny. Where we went early mm -hmm. this year, Greg yeah. Miller, um, good guys, and uh, we're great. It was awesome. We're like sixth place on their team. Nice. So that was cool. But um, like they are there like as a unit, and they have a bunch of guests, and like they're taking shifts and stuff. So you can take a break. Yeah, you didn't. I didn't. And like that's what I would ideally want to do is like if I had like if I was doing this in Seattle with my buddies, like go on for shifts and like, Oh, I'm gonna go take like a three hour break. Cause like, yeah, you know, and then come back. Um, but it was That's awesome. Not as die hard. I, mm -mm. I mean, I would do it. It's a great cause. You know, yeah. I would love to, I don't know if I do 24 hour streams right. every month, but I would love to do like a 12 hour, you know, charity stream every month or something. See but, if you could do one where you don't go to the bathroom either. That would yeah, be that's oh, a good cool. raise the level of and intensity. No eating. Yeah, no eating. And I no honestly bathroom. didn't eat that much because I was just busy playing well, games. Can't, like I was just kind of snacking. Really burning yeah. that I many looked, calories. I looked in buttons. my garbage can because he did it here. You know, and I was on the road. And I looked in my garbage can <laughs> and I was like, "It's the first time in my life I've ever felt like I had like teenage sons." I was like, <laughs> yeah. I looked at all the snacks. It was and like, like it was brownie like, bites. Eat 120 pizza rolls. So many. Very funny. Yeah. And the um, I was also confused how you set it up. I'll, I'll explain it to you because it's not going to be interesting to them. Yeah. But I was like trying to watch from uh, from my phone while, but like trying to make sense of my kitchen. Like, how did he set this up? Yeah. He's playing on that TV, but it looks like he's over here. It was the weirdest. I was. Uh, yeah, I mean, just sitting I on the side. Yeah, and Clayton tried to explain it. To, or not Clayton. Um, JC. JC explained it to me. Before we go any farther. The voice you're hearing, the face you're seeing, if you're a Patreon subscriber, uh, my little brother, one of my favorite humans, Patrick Moot in the house. What up, Jeff? Uh, what Patrick up, Moot. Uh, I started up, comedy everybody? with his older brother, Brian Moot, in Seattle, Washington at Giggles Comedy Club. We started roughly around the same time. Mm -hmm. But since we were both so new and since we were both so green at comedy and we both loved sports and we both were not hipsters, we naturally clicked to each other because everyone else was so Seattle and clicky and didn't invite us in. Um, I remember Brian talking about you when you guys first met and oh, he really? was like, yeah, it was like he met like his new best friend. And <laughs> oh, it was man, so man. funny. It was like, he was like, I met this guy, Jeff. He's yeah. so cool, man. He's like uh, really funny. That's and, like, so really nice. nice. <laughs> like really good at comedy. I was like, good. got pizza last night. <laughs> I was, was not good fun. at comedy. We're going to see a movie. <laughs> oh, it's great. He's cool, man. You're <laughs> going to love him. He was going to spend the night. He was misremembering the comedy part because that was dog shit when I first started. Um, but then over time from hanging out with Brian so much, we were like literally like thick, you know, like wherever I was, he was and he was, I was like, I didn't go anywhere where they weren't like, where's Brian? And like sure. Brian would like anywhere you'd go, but like, where's Jeff? Like it was, we were always together. But then that I met your mom, I met your dad, I met you, I met Killian. I literally like met all your cousins. Like it was sure. like over time, I, mean, I was just kind of part of the Moot family. Yeah. You lived with my grandma. <laughs> yeah, like, Jeff just... lived with <laughs> She had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I lived downstairs. Occasionally she would, I would hear somebody coming down the stairs and I would just like start. 
out the back. <laughs> <laughs> Literally slept at their house without without her knowing. Oh wow. Yeah, he's been. I mean, my family loves Jeff too, and Jeff has been, you know, there with us through Christmases everything. And, yeah, yeah, and like yeah. A, you know, tough times on the family and good yeah. times through the family. It's been really fun. Um, I'm so excited to have you on because Tony is also from Seattle. Woo. We're all yes. the Seattle people, Go Seahawks Hawks. guys. Go yeah, we all love Mariners, Sonics, the whole the whole deal. Also, you love movies. Tony's a big movie guy. I'm a big movie guy. I'm not as big of a movie guy as you guys. Um, you've had a crazy career. It's been all over the place. So in your family, you were the first one to move to Los Angeles. Yes. Before Brian, before Killian left the nest. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I graduated high school in 2002. I spent like a year in Seattle and yeah. then I moved to LA, just packed everything in my car and was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. This is what Love I've it. always wanted to do. And so, you know, um, had all these great hopes and dreams and yeah. was down for anything. That's I kind of been it. my career is always like, I'm down for whatever. I'm down. <laughs> like, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like that. Yeah. People are like, you know, like, what are you up to? It's like, I don't know. What do you got? I did, <laughs> I did, what, what, I did what, home what design shows. It's sure. I've done the Ninja Warrior course, lip sync battle. I've done uh, freaking stand up, obviously. I did Numb like nuts. a prank stunt show, yeah. like a travel show. Like sure. just literally anything that pays that seems fun, I'm down <laughs> for. Which yeah. sucks because they have no buy Box to put me in, right? You right. want to do commercials though? Uh, I would do a commercial. Well, you don't want to do the the auditions. The are what's so frustrating. It's, yeah, 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 it's so frustrating. It, there's nothing more humiliating than getting an email. I'm a grown man, and the email's like, "Hey, can you dress up like a pirate and go to Hermosa Beach in 45 yeah, minutes?" And you're like, "No, yeah, no, I can't. I'll never do that." Dude, you yeah. do miss some gems though, because the people that I see in commercial auditions, like like amateur hour stuff, yeah, like the best. So I was in. Uh, audition last week um, and you know you slayed at the beginning of your audition they bring us in you know auditions usually you go in it's like a cattle call you bet like yeah. three at a time <laughs> so you see some characters right and you know commercial auditions not you know Juilliard graduates sure. for the most no, part they're, yeah. you know, they're people a lot of 19 year old bright ideas <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that are like I guess I'm on trying, drugs now you know, acting really hard I guess I'll try drugs yes exactly and, just and like there's people so hard yeah, yeah there's the so vets right there's now. veterans like I feel like I'm, I'm turning into a grizzled vet I've been out here for long enough that like I know like I don't need to bring a headshot to a goddamn commercial audition you, no, look, okay. you know no, like you don't even need to bring talent check yeah, it all exactly. at the door just go and they're just looking for a face what does that look like he looks like a face they want it's they want to be everything these days like slice of life they just want to be like natural just be a human yeah that's it this guy comes in it's like we're slating and he's got his shades on for some reason and like all right what's your name and he whips him off david caruso style like csi yeah. oh, and he was yeah. like my name's michael blah 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 and i was just like what like i was like <laughs> it. I, it. I, I was Booked afraid that i was gonna lose it because i was so excited he did that but that's they're like oh we got two crazy people in this room now Johnny Cage. I, it was insane if i knew the number of commercials that i didn't get because of the person that they paired me with it would probably it's, make me oh, cry yeah, for seriously. a week because yeah. I've been with some We've people. We've talked about on this podcast before. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, who is this? Who, who is this jackass? Trying, Why, they are then, so bad. So then we're on a plane, and then it's like, just act like you're on a plane. This is what I did at my audition. I put the, like, bring something that you would bring on a plane. So I brought these headphones. Yeah. I put them on, and I went like this. Just leaned against Nailed the it. wall, okay? Nailed it. For like five minutes, and then I left, right? Yeah. But booked the job. I'm what shooting them. Stupid audition. I'm shooting tomorrow. Dumb. The guy next to me has his headphones in, and he's just. Oh, you do that on a he's plane? Yeah, that's what and you do? The, the, the lady even said that. I was like, so you would dance like that on a plane for four hours? He's like, oh, yeah, I just love music. Like, oh, I just, my God. I'm just like, this you know is what I, do is I, I bring, I bring, I'm mad, and I haven't even met the guy. Yeah. I bring like an egg salad sandwich, because yeah. that's my favorite person on a plane, is when he just pulls out yeah. their lunch and starts yeah. munching. And like, more I, meet, and oh, I meet real people like that all the, all the time. Like, yeah. I, But uh, dancing, I've never seen I that know. once. It was so funny. There was uh, the, best. the first commercial I ever booked. Oh, yeah, well, let's say that. Let's just preface. I was heading down that path, and then we got a little sidetracked. You booked... All the commercials. I did. I worked B a lot. Before we got down I here. I peaked early. He had, he was like the Brad Pitt of commercials. I did. Me and Brian time. would be sitting like at some shitty, you know, bar after the comics or after like giggles. We look on the TV like, Pat, it's Patty. Look, Pat's on the thing. And then like three commercials later, different company, some iced tea thing. We're like, what? Pat's on that one. Like we couldn't believe it. I had, I just had the face. And I thought I, it would always be like that. Like I thought it would always, because I booked three commercials in one day once. And it happened to be oh, that they God. all shot at different times. And, and I was then just your like, agent, boom. I'm saying it, not Pat, so you can't sue him. I I believe your agent either took all your money or your, or you buy cocaine Fabergé <laughs> eggs or something. I don't know where it went. <laughs> One of the worst days of my life is tax day. Not because, like, I get money back usually from my taxes yeah. because all the money comes out 
when it goes. But because that's when I finally figure out how much money I made in the year. And there have been so many times where I'll see it and they'll be like, woo, look at that, like 140, good for you. And I'm like, where did it go? (laughs) What happened to that? No, I have nothing. I own a dog. That's it. That's it. (laughs) He booked a thousand commercials. I did eight national back-to-back years. Isn't that like a millionaire? At least like four or five. Yeah. No, I know. You know, and now, and, 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 and nowadays, it's just not the, it's not the same nowadays with no, the commercial they don't world. Pay as much as they used to. No. Everything like you know, when there was a time when like you know this was crushing. Yeah, when it was just like the look, it was like a little bit of Eric Foreman, but yes. just a sprinkle of Ashton Kusher, just enough to make it <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, to every product. not alienate the customer. I, a yeah, little I bit. crushed every That's McDonald's. So talk about like fast food. I was just like his the guy. commercial reel has to be. Insane. They'd always pair me with girls too, where I'd be like, oh, and here's your girlfriend. And I'd be like, ha! <laughs> I could do way better. She would never know. Oh, the opposite? No, yeah. she would never date me. Oh, really? She is way I, I think you're thinking the opposite. I love how every guy in the commercials just outkick their coverage by like a mile. It's <laughs> yeah. like, it's crazy. Don't you feel like there's a lot of girls nowadays, though, on TV where they're like, she's approachable. Like, she's the funny gal. Like, they're, they're like trying to do a lot more of that. They're well, like, I imagine there's a lot of hot chicks not getting work nowadays. And sometimes they'll also like take a girl who's very good looking and very pretty and be like put glasses on her oh, and act like oh yeah. look at how, look at look at what Dude, i did that, like, that, now she's, she's so much that. more approachable that, yeah, it's that like happens, that's though. put glasses what on you her. said happens because uh i the, the lady who did my headshots is a casting director too and she told me about a time when they were doing like a uh skincare stuff and they're down to like four girls and they cut one girl i was like oh she's just way too pretty like, yeah it'll alienate the customer yeah, you don't want if if like uh, my sisters are watching those commercials, they don't want to see some hot chick. They yeah. would be annoyed. They'd roll yeah. their eyes. Yeah, I mean, and men aren't buying makeup. Yeah, so let's get some like Jennifer. Lo- I have a theory that Jennifer Lawrence is like the most popular actress in the world. One, because she's incredibly talented. She's let's get great. that out of the way. She's Wonderful. one of the best actors. Ever. Dreamweaver. But also, here we go. Here we go. She's you know, she's approachable. And oh, she's yeah. she she looks like someone you'd know. She yeah. doesn't look like she doesn't have like big huge tits and like this tiny waist and like this gorgeous face. I feel like we all know tons of women that look like Jennifer Lawrence. So you mix the talent with a everyday looking human, and it's something that we all can root for. Yeah, that's why every girl's like, oh, I love Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, because you don't feel Threatened. ugly around yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like when you watch the movie. Um, that's kind of how when people ask me like, how do you get through the industry? with all that kind of like you know negative feedback and all oh, the yeah. no's and everything like that I just assume that they didn't cast me because I'm too pretty that's and it. it doesn't that's, hurt that's that the way it doesn't hurt as bad I guess I'm too pretty it. for that role yeah. I guess I'm too tall yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what Dude, I do I've been too pretty for every commercial audition I've gone on this year <laughs> every want, single one they want some ugly guy it's pretty, pretty good feeling yeah. kind of like it Pat they booked uh, Ryan Gosling. I don't understand you're like yeah. well I was too pretty what a fucking ugly how ugly is he not as good looking as me I'm more approachable than this you know what I mean <laughs> Wait, so another cool thing is that, like I said, about you being from where we're from, is we all root for the Seahawks. Love I have a tequila right by my house now. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like I, I scooter there. I've watched most of the Seahawks games there. Did they do, are they kind of doing it the owner, same? And it's the same, yeah, like all Seahawks. Like really? when I was in there, there was like one kid rooting for the Chiefs this week. What a chump. Um, oh, no, the Chiefs, who we play, the uh, Redskins. Reds. No, 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 the, no, the, the Bucks. Bucks. That's right. I picked yeah. all the red and yellow yeah. team except the Bucks. Yeah. Um, and everyone else was Seahawks fans. And uh, one a really funny thing happened, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I'm all over the place today. Somebody was going, fuck the Bucks. Fuck the Bucks. And uh, the <laughs> owner came out and goes, hey, guys, guys, it's a kid's bar. <laughs> And then I go, no, there's no such thing it's as a, a kid's, kid's bar. It's a kid's, it's a kid's bar. bar. It's an oxymoron. Yeah, that's and then the owner started laughing because I was standing right by him when he shouted it. I was like, no. And then he goes, he goes, oh, yeah, I, I meant there's some kids over there. Can we please? It's <laughs> yeah. like, you're an idiot. It's not a kid's bar. It's a kid's bar. Um, Tequila's great. But dude, how, how good are our Seahawks right now? Oh, oh man. they're wonderful. Big game on Monday. I yeah. Was, yeah, it's a huge oh. one. It's a huge one. I think, I think the Niners and put it down, write it down, frauds. Oh, fraudulent. You think so? Yeah, nine and zero frauds. Or are they eight? No, eight whatever they I are, hate they're them, frauds. But they uh, they look like the real deal. To Their me. defense is good. Their defense is really good. And the Seahawks have we our record is not our record is better than we are. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've we, won some lucky sus- ones. Suspect sure. Games, yeah. I mean, we beat the Bengals by one. They but, stink. We also gave up 460 passing yards yeah. to Matt Schaub. Yeah. Who I didn't even know. I thought he was a high school fitness teacher at this point. <laughs> yeah. Like, I had no idea Seriously. he was still in football. Yeah. Well, we've been, like, losing at home. 
Yeah. Which is unlike us. But here's the thing. The reason we're winning Russ those games, good. it's because of him. Yeah, Russ he's looks good. Like, beast. like at the end of the game versus the Bucks, they tied, uh, they scored a touchdown with like 30 seconds left and then kicked an extra point to tie it, to yeah. send it to overtime. And I was sitting there, I was like, these Bucks better go for two and try to win. Because don't give Russell the ball in overtime because yeah. you're, you're, he's just going to march it down the field. And, he did. And that's exactly what he did. He was dropping dimes. And he also didn't throw a single interception until week six. He like, only has, he's tw- got one. He has 22 touchdowns and one interception this year. And that, like, that's to, to not get one until week six. Crazy. Like, what's the, like, the, um, the guy for the Browns that everyone thought would be like their Baker savior. Mayfield. Baker, Baker Mayfield <laughs> has twenty. <laughs> yeah, it's like already like a twenty. He's just and a he was night. supposed to be like the savior, and they were trying and to like MVP the best before part, the season right, started. He's like, oh, he's Russell Wilson, but with a little meat on <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. The best part is we got Flash Gordon coming in this week. I know, I know. Josh. I love it. I'm very excited. I mean, oh, Tyler boy. Lockett is right now putting up a season that's like he's at like 700 yards and six touchdowns right now yeah. I and mean, he's DK going for Metcalf like a, is I was gonna say that should huge. be MVP is DK Metcalf like DK. he's having games and he's getting better every him. week it's and insane then, and then now that you got Flash Gordon like who do you who do you cover downfield DK or Flash yeah. doesn't matter because we got both I so it's like get, you know I want to get a DK Metcalf jersey but I heard they only make them in super muscly and I don't do that I won't <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. Right. they only make it for him you know what that I wear guy's every a game he's a beast because you know like I'm not unlike any other sports fan where you get the jersey and the player that gets traded yeah. or the player oh. like i have an earl thomas jersey and i can't even look at it yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just go this god i can't even look at this jersey and I, I wore it with so much pride before yeah um and you know we all make those decisions my buddy matt light shout out to him <laughs> he's never owned a jersey where the player did it's like a matt light curse <laughs> like and um <clears throat> that's why i only went russ well, but here's the thing. I knew he'd be around. Russ might break our heart eventually. Yeah. But here's the thing. I've been wearing Blitz. Yeah, there you Blitz go. the Seahawk. Yeah, I have the Blitz, and it makes me so I'm happy. I'm just stubborn. I'm still wearing my Joe Jaravicious jersey, because I was like, I paid <laughs> for this, and I'm not wearing it one season, <laughs> yeah. okay? I paid wow. for it. Yeah. Put it next that, to the Dion Branch jersey. flirts and... into an area of like, is he just rooting for white guys? That's always fun. When you go to a game and you see a Joe Jaravicious jersey, or you see like a Hooshman Zada, it's always like kind of a fun. Jerry Rice. Well, Jerry Rice is cool. I don't know if they're funny or cheap. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I got a I'm loaf of tattoo It's like you pay the money for it and then they're gone the next season. It's like, I don't care. I'm wearing it. Yeah. I'm wearing it. To be honest, there's, there's n- no Seahawks jersey you could wear that would uh, upset me unless it was made in China. We <laughs> oh, know who you are. Yeah. Those jerseys don't match the color. <laughs> They've got busted out. I mean, it doesn't matter how broke you are. Do not wear those Chinese <laughs> knockoff Seahawks jerseys. They I've, drive me insane. I've ordered one before and then like somebody put it in the dryer and I was like, no, no. <laughs> It's like kryptonite for this piece of yeah. trash. I like pulled it out and the numbers were falling off. Uh, yeah. and it was all tiny. It was like, yeah. oh man. There, I see. I probably see one once a week at least at that yeah. at that bar. They're like someone comes in and it's, you're like, dude, it's, it's fun there. Like I've only been in the one in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And a few years ago when we beat the the Vikings in the playoffs when they missed that field goal yeah. at the end of the game, I was watching the game there and just how we're just like, oh, I can't believe we lost this game. I think right. I was there too. Actually, me, me and Pat used to go to the one in Hollywood pretty often. Yeah, we, yeah, so me, my buddy Aubrey, and then this guy Will all met at Outpost one day, like six or seven years ago on Kawanga. And okay. we were there and we were like, man, oh, this yeah. bar stinks, because yeah. it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, yeah. gone now. And we're and he was like, hey, I know some people at Tequila, and I know the bartender there. And that's who he was talking about. And he was like, she's from Seattle. We should go watch it up there. And I was like, sweet. Who was so, it? Kristen. Uh, I don't remember. I'm trying Kristen to remember. Kristen Hardy. I would have remembered. Yeah, she's great. You, you'll you recognize yeah. her when you go in. Tall girl, dark hair, really sweet. Um, go up there, and she's like, we should just do this every weekend. And so that's how the whole tequila Seahawks oh, thing really? started. That's I was awesome. an original. Got that's the 12 great. tattoo. Had a boy. So got like probably about 15 people to all get that tattoo. That said, have not been there for a game this season. Oh, really? Dude, yeah, but those moments, fan. those moments, like just like we were on the edge of defeat, season's over. That was the and best. Then, and then they miss a field goal, and we win the game, and like, just the euphoria, uh, that was great. especially that was, with a bunch of other fans. Wasn't that against the Vikings? Yeah, yeah, it was yeah Blair Walsh. I watched I that. Yeah, it was Blair Walsh. Uh, yeah. It was like and then seven we degrees. signed him in the offseason. I watched <laughs> that at Fox. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's with our kicker, dude. I know. Oh, Myers. I. What's with all kickers? How did this mm-hmm. all of a sudden became the, uh, the hardest position to play in football? Yeah, you know, like, you know, you know, know what's, what's rough with extra points. When Vinatieri's missing game winning oh field goals. You're, you know that it's like, ooh. We know it's weird. It's like, uh, and you guys can disagree with this, but in. In my memory of being a Seahawks fan, the reason we love Russ so much is because we've just never had a quarterback no. that we loved, loved. Yeah. Like, we, Hasbeck had one good, like, year where he was really nailing it. And, and he a lot of people said, we want the ball and we're going to score like an idiot. I know. And we used to well, blow that was the year before the Super yeah. Bowl. But yeah. I remember chanting <laughs> Dilfer. Yeah, we like, blew yeah. him off the field, chanting yeah. Dilfer at Husky Stadium. We, we used to call him Hasselsack for, like, yeah. three <laughs> my years. Dad, my dad still won't. 
Give him credit. And that Hassel was our bunk. best quarterback since Jim Zorn, who played way before we were born. Yeah, we had to so, go through the John Kitnas. Uh, the Rick Myers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, I see, there's a, there used to be a Rick Meyer jersey at a bar at the LAX. Oh, really? Up there. I'm like, why the fuck is I there a Rick? Rick that. Take that I remember that. I remember seeing that. I was like, why is there that? a Rick Meyer jersey? Well, that's, <laughs> yeah. like, that's why we fell in love with Russ so hard. It's because yeah. Russ is so good right out the gates. Took us to two Super Bowls back to back. Like, So now we're like in love lust with Russell Wilson. Yeah. However, the opposite is happening with our kicker, where... We've famously had great kickers, like reliable punters, reliable field goal kickers, uh, um, Hauschka, Josh, Josh Brown. Brown um, I'm trying to think, John Ryan. We've always had like kickers that we can rely on, and then this is happening. Yeah, Blair Walsh, uh, Janikowski, a bad Oof. Yeah. year. Oof. Myers. Yeah, I don't I, like. It's really I can't think of like a really good kicker right now. Like I mean, in and the league, in general, just in general, I Justin am, Tucker. He's I'm the not, only one. Uh, and he even missed on Sunday. And he's the yeah, he's yeah. the most accurate in NFL history, and even he missed on Sunday. Let's get Vanderjack. Why don't you come out of retirement, Vanderjack? <laughs> <laughs> play for my Seahawks. He needs his jersey. <laughs> I'll get you a jersey. <laughs> yeah, I I don't understand. I'm also a uh, I'm not I'm not good at it, but yeah. I'm a gambler, nice. and I cannot tell you how many times a missed field goal has absolutely screwed me this year. <laughs> oh, and it, boy. Did Terry missing that one? I almost punched a hole in the TV. <laughs> I was like, what? Is wrong with you <laughs> yeah. and he didn't just miss it and then everybody's like well the laces were in it's yeah. like he's a grown man yeah, but, I don't but what true. his laces were he just cost me $300 yeah, and he yeah. kicked it out of bounds like yeah. it didn't even like it barely made the, it out of the back the, of the holder needs to get the laces out though we all seen Ace Ventura I know Holder. It's not the kicker's fault. They're little footballs. Dude, Unbelievable. Laces out, bro. <laughs> what a Laces sports nut, huh? So this is something I've been... Um, <laughs> I went on a drunken tirade around some other friends of mine. Uh, and I, I was like, oh, we should talk about this on the podcast. <laughs> I think tanking isn't a real thing. Really? Like in sports? Yes. You don't think they're actually doing it? So, yeah, and I'll tell you my theory and why, and then we can kind of run it back. Um, so people say, oh, uh, oh, the Dolphins, you know, they're just tanking so that they can get a second round pick. And all the fans, they think they're so clever by going, good, I hope we lose the rest of the because I want it for – and everybody thinks they're so clever for knowing that, for going, oh, yeah, you know, I, I've learned that you just say it's good to lose the rest of the season because we're so bad. I'm hoping yeah, we lose, we want blah, the blah, draft blah. Pick. Do you think players and coaches are going out there going, yeah, let's just play bad today? No. Like it, yeah, because coaches want to win and the players want to win. You, they're going to play their asses off. But oh. I think front offices okay. want and to how, lose. And how do you tank. do it? So look at the Bengals. Okay. They just benched Andy Dalton. Why? Not because their backup quarterback is going to be better. Okay. He's going to be a fucking disaster. And I guarantee you the coach doesn't want to do it. Yeah. I guarantee he's a first year coach. I guarantee you they're they haven't won a game. They're 0 and 8. They're the worst team in the NFL right now because yeah. the Dolphins have won and the Jets have won. So the front office is like, hey, you're gonna bench Andy Dalton and we're gonna play this schlub who's who's a rookie and who's gonna be awful, and then we're gonna get a better quarterback. Well, but Andy Dalton lost those games. He's and he's a bum. But <laughs> you can't But he's the best bum they got. Exactly. You can't tell me that this guy's gonna be better. Like if they're trying to win games. He's 0 and 7. I that's know. a pretty good excuse to well, bench your quarterback. Mm, Say, let's try this young guy. We've already lost this season. Let's just throw this they've young had, guy. They've had injuries. AJ Green's been gone. He yeah. tore us up. Andy Dalton tore us up. Okay. But you just can't tell me that the the choice to try to win is to put this guy in for Andy Dalton. It's only gonna get worse. But if this guy's losing. Right. And you've got a question mark on your bench. The season's pretty much a, a throwaway, anyways. Let's just try that question mark out. Let's see if this kid's got some you anybody. Know, th- and those kind but, of things happen. But what the the reason, especially because this is Andy Dalton's last year on his contract. Okay, you're just you're just pouring money down the drain by not playing him. This is just some rookie who, if you're going to have a bad season, you're going to go draft Tua or you're going to go draft Joe Burrow, your next or quarterback anyways. Trevor Lawrence. So it's not like you're testing this guy. Well, if, like, he was like, if he had like won half the games and lost half the games, and then all of a sudden the front not, office just says, let's put him on the bench, then I'd say that there's an argument they're for not tanking. Tank, they're not tanking in that position, though. They're literally they're like, we have an opportunity to get the first pick because mm-hmm. they're so bad. So they're right. going all in, I think. I mean, the front office. You look I don't at think like, it's the players. I don't think it's the coaches. No, I they lose every game this season. Right, they lose the rest of the game yeah. because the front office has some conspiracy to tank. Yeah, don't you think that head coach is going to be like you, motherfuckers? We lost every game. I'm going to go down as the like the coach that Biggest lost loser. every single game, and now you guys have an excuse to fire me. You guys have an excuse to like get whatever. Well, but I think they'll fire him if they. I think they're they're more inclined to say you went 0 and 16 because we wanted you to because we you did what we told you to do. 
by putting this player, starting right. this guy instead of the other. I think if he was like, no, Andy Dalton's my guy, then they'd be like, all right, well, I think go, the more obvious the way goes. the front offices do it a lot of times is like what you see with, with uh, the Dolphins, where they, and I love what's going on with the Dolphins right now because they basically traded away everything. So mm-hmm. that's usually the front office, like kind of like signaling Reset. a take where yeah. it's like, yeah, like we're going to, they trade away Tonsil, they traded Dude, away. I've seen with my Mariners, for our Mariners, yeah. for fucking. They're just teen years, which is a form well, of tanking. It's not putting your team in the best position. I honestly don't think win. the Mariners ever tanked. I, I didn't wish say tanked. No, but, I said what he just said. Yeah, where they go, oh, we're going to okay, rebuild, reset, and then two seasons later, oh, rebuild, reset. You're like, Do it all how again. many times well, can you reset? Th- that's the frustrating thing because I don't think the Mariners ever. They, they, I don't they, think they tank. They I don't did, think tanking's real. No, 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 no. I don't think they ever say full rebuild. I think we're we're kind of doing that now, but I think it's always been like, uh, we'll be good maybe next year. So they like do it. They like. Dip their toe in the water. Where I'd rather them if well, they're going to do it. Maybe it's these shitty sports reporters in Liquidate. Seattle, like uh, you know John, whatever his name is. You know that guy, uh, jo- Greg Johns. Oh yeah. But like, at least I know that those Seattle reporters have said rebuilding season a million times. Maybe right? not the front office. Maybe not. Uh, yeah. Bob I, Melvin I, I, or whatever. But like, yeah. I've heard the term "we're rebuilding" sure ten times in the last fifteen years, and, and that, it drives me. And insane. that's my problem. Is I don't think they. F- Fully go into it. They do like a half rebuild. Yeah, where yeah, we it's go, not like we a remodel. Get, we, we go Robin, we we get Robinson house. Cano in the middle of a rebuild. But why? Ugh. You know, like that's t- dipping your toe yeah, in. It's Signing so crazy. old players. Yeah, exactly. That's and the problem. But now trading we're not really away some that. of our young guys too, like Edwin, and I, they, it's crazy. What I love about the trade. whole Edwin rebuilding thing now. is that <laughs> no one has ever told. Or when when Ryan Fitzpatrick has been told we're rebuilding, he never listens. Like he's made so many teams like better. Like when they're supposed to, like the Dolphins, he won with them last week right. and like look pretty good. And I guarantee you, they keep him in right now. The front office is probably like, all right, easy, dude. Like take yeah. it easy, just <laughs> chill out. Like we're not, you're out there playing like 110. Yeah, percent You yeah. got, and we give you nothing. You've got nobody. The players will never give in to a to a tank. Yeah, no I guess player wants so, to go and get their ass beat. So I guess the thing is that like, I'm not wrong. Players and coaches. Do not tank. That's absolutely correct. I don't uh, think so. Organizations tank. Yes, that's what I yeah. think. And they just, I mean, tanking like is is kind of a phrase for, but really like when you take away all the talent and put them in a position to lose, like, you know, you know what you're doing. Right. Like, yeah. you're, not, you're not held doing anybody any favors. I don't like that there. kind of shit. I think that that's, uh, that, I mean, it's obviously just strategy, but like, I think that that's like a really. And that's what's scary what, about like. The fans must, that's not fair to the fans. Like, it's about, not fair to this. Like, like watch, no, and, think of the NBA this year. Look at the, look at the Warriors. They're going to have a down year. And now that Steph's out for three months, Clay Thompson, they were talking before, like he might come back in like March for the end of the season. I guarantee you he doesn't now. Yeah. Why? Why do right, that? Right, right, right. Let him heal fully. You're going to be bad. What if they get the first overall Dude, pick? Dude, I'm telling you, yeah. I'm, just mark it right now. It's uh, it's only been uh, eight games in the NBA season, and it's a long season. People forget NBA is real long, um, 80-something games. The Lakers are going to win the, the NBA championship. Not only are they going to march good. right in there, but I think that they're going to win. The, like, they're looking good. We, mm. And I think the Clippers are going to be the, the path we'll have to go through for sure. But... These Lakers you, are so good. Could you They're imagine fun. Lakers Clippers Western Conference Finals? Amazing! It'll be crazy. That Staples Center will be rocking for seven I mean, games. That's great. That is wild. The travel. You know, one of our best <laughs> players right now is uh, Dwight Howard. He's yeah, killing he's it. He's killing it. Danny Green. Yeah. He's you got see this, yeah. his shot versus the Ma- the Mavericks to send him to overtime. Beautiful. And all these scrubs with the short memories in sports. That's one thing. Like, how long do we call the Spurs old? What a whole decade? <laughs> yeah, and they just yeah, kept seriously. winning. <laughs> seriously. We called them old forever. Mm-hmm. And I and now that 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 dynasty is is retired and stuff. Like, I, you don't hear that as much. Maybe people have forgotten, but. Now I hear it with LeBron. People go, oh, he's old. He's not what he was. Dude just dropped like 45 points. Yeah. Like oh, a he triple looks so down. nasty. Monster. Crushing it. He, he looks just so, nasty. so excited. And also that injury that he had last season was the longest he's ever gotten to be take a break from all the... And he still tried to play through and he probably shouldn't have. Right. You but know? like that, like we're looking at maybe like, ooh, maybe this is arrested LeBron. Yeah. Maybe this is what arrested LeBron looks like. It, yeah, it's it, dangerous. It, there was a couple of plays in that game too where it's like, tell that that he's old. Tell yeah. that man that he's old. He just ran through the key and dunked on yeah. everybody yeah. so hard and swung around and like Don't launched that off. that hairline fool you. That no. kid is a machine yes. you know playing what? at like next level. Yeah, his hairline scares me because it makes me think that money can't fix that. I think he's just got too busy of a schedule to get yeah, it taken care of maybe. because he totally could. Yeah, it, seem, think, it seems like it's always like a temporary would. fix instead of like just getting plugs right. or something. Well, he was he did headband every game until that game where uh, kind of pushed up his hair, yeah. where Anthony did the famous like thing that yeah. happened. Um, <laughs> and then now he's got no headband every game since. Yeah. 
He's, he's, <laughs> a he's, poor guy. he's human. Yeah. He's, he's, not a, he's not a machine. He's got he's feelings. So yeah. he's, he's my doesn't, favorite. He doesn't of all seem time. human. He's, he's incredible. Yeah, he's a beast. But man, imagine our, our team right now has on the bench, on our bench, we have Dwight Howard, Boogie Cousins, Rajon well, Rondo. Cousins, I, don't, I think he's out all year. Uh, all year? Yeah, he tore his uh, ACL or Achilles or Oof. something. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought he was just out. I didn't know he was no, out all yeah, year. I think he's out all year. Oh, that sucks. So he's like, he's like KD style. I'm yeah. all about, who's who's the white guy, the, the bald white guy? The yeah, white, Alex Caruso. White Mamba. I don't Alex like him. Caruso. I love him. Dude, he's because good. I'm, I know he's good and he's great. He's, he's playing athletic. better than Pope Prince Paul or whatever the hell his name Kendrick, is, number one. Yeah. God, I that love guy. He looks like a science teacher. Yeah. It's, he does not look like a basketball I'm player I'm famously at all. hard on my athletes visually. Yeah, like I'm, fa- I'm very vain about how I want my athletes to look. Yeah, and yeah. that guy has no he business checks being on the lake. boxes. Zero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how'd he get good? I don't know. Dude, it's I like, know. dude, it's, it's the hustle, dude. He's he's the Woody Harrelson he's of the NBA, bro. He's been hanging other basketball players He's the Woody Harrelson. Hey, he's, he's the Woody it. Harrelson. He should make catch up. Learn how to dress or do his hair. Like, so, like I don't know. It's very weird. Yeah. I don't like it. It's good. He he looks like a scrub. <laughs> yeah. It's like if you pick me up in an Uber, I'd be like, you're pretty big for an Uber driver, but I get it. Yeah. It's cool. Everybody's hard up for work every once in a while. Well, I just feel like he'd be like the best street baller. Yeah. Like where you're like, uh, I'll pick up that guy. And they're like, nah, dude. I just, can't believe yeah, you just took that guy. Taking charges at the 24-hour fitness. Just like, chill, Caruso. <laughs> chill, no, just, just dropping on. dimes. Yeah. He like scores every one of our team's points. Diving and we're like, loose balls. Yeah. how's that guy doing this? Just crazy. dunking on everybody. He's the ultimate hustler. He's the ultimate basketball shark. Yeah. All right. Next up. That's what I was saying with the Woody Harrelson comparison. And this is a risky one. Got you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, I got it. No, okay. I thought it was great. I thought it was a great comparison. Uh, but just I, just thought, I just thought we lost it because you started saying yeah, that. Yeah, my fault. Like, so like, oh, that's here's what, what happened. Was In my mind, I love the way Woody Harrelson looks. <laughs> I was, just, and I was like, I, I was, was kind of like, I don't talking want white to, yeah, 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 but I don't want to, yeah. Woody's cool. Yeah, he is cool. Um, <laughs> so this is a risky one because it's kind of a spoiler by the time this, because this comes out on Wednesday. Um, I got to see a, a an early screening of Dr. Sleep. Yeah. Oh, nice. Dude. Good. So good. Really? Nice. Two thumbs up. Highly recommend. I'm not going to spoil anything. Uh, but if you've read the book... Then I'm not spoiling anything. I've been yeah. reading the book. It follows the book with my ears. Oh, so I'll tell you this: the it follows the book. That counts. That's how I read. That's it follows the book um, entirely perfect, with the exception of one thing. And uh, do you want me to tell you the one thing they didn't do? Sure. Okay. Uh, if you don't like spoilers, fast forward sixty seconds. <laughs> uh, but if you read one, the book, 1, this isn't a spoiler. In Two, the book, 1, she's very beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, the woman that wears the hat. Mm-hmm. She's very beautiful and very seductive, and she's very powerful. But she, uh, she, she takes off her beauty and like has a real ugly face, you know, when she does evil things. Uh, and they don't do that. She, this woman's just hot the whole time. <laughs> so other than that, it follows the book perfectly and gives a nice tip of the hat to something that they left out of the original Shining that Stephen King wanted. Stephen King put in the book. So in the Shining, the um, oh, I don't want to say. It. Yeah, no I spoilers. won't say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I I love Stephen King and I The Shining is one of my favorite films ever. Then this will be your incredible. second favorite film. I'm ever. really really excited about <laughs> it. I didn't realize because I didn't know anything about Doctor Sleep before I started listening to the book on yeah. tape and uh it's it's out there man like it goes into a whole new it yep. goes into avenues i did I not expect at all I, and here's the thing this is something someone said at the collider screening that uh that i've been saying repeating because i think it's really well said is that if you don't like or know the shining this movie would just be whatever but if you like the shining this movie's Amazing. It's quite a ride because it explains so much. I thought The Shining was just like Jack Nicholson is going stir crazy and he kind of sees ghosts and he kills uh, his, family. his family. Like that's that's what sure. I thought it was. I didn't think there was any, you know, anything more to it than that. Right. But this adds all these other these elements and things and it's telepathic so, yeah. and kind of monster. And type it made me and... love The Shining. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. And also, like in The Shining, there's like one setting the whole movie, and in this one, seventy five different settings, different locations, different stuff. So it's it was it was it was good. If Bigger. you like The Shining, go see it. I I can't wait. I The Shining is like this is I I'm not a great sleeper, and I've always kind of wondered why. But I like fall asleep to that movie like three nights a week. You're like kidding. I'll just flip it on and just the nice sounds That's of like a, a man killing wow. his family just like oh lulls me to sleep. It just feels comfortable. <laughs> Pat it's is just... the yin to my yang when it comes to movies though. As far as like uh, about our movie opinions, 
it's very tough to please Patrick with movies. Um, yeah. And I'm very easy to please with movies. And I'll be like, no, no, no fuck. And like, Pat's like, no, it's not it's fun. Not, like, whenever, I love it when people are like, you're like, how was the movie? They're like, it was fun. It's yeah. like, so you didn't like it. <laughs> but it sounds I like you didn't like it. I like it, it, it was fun. It was fun. It's a movie. Like, it's... <laughs> That was fun. Yeah. Now well, because you see it from like an artistic. Like, it was yeah. cute. Yeah. It was cute. <laughs> like, what do you expect it to be? It. I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah. It was a good movie. Yeah, like, I don't it, know. That was it, too. It was cute. It was cute. <laughs> it was cute. Did they you tried. like it, too? I haven't seen it yet. Oh, dude. But I didn't like it, one. And I think that, like, right now, horror movie directors are way. Like, the ones that are hot right now, like the guy who did Midsummer. Um, the it two director like some of these these really hot horror movie directors cannot build tension to save their lives really i like, disagree there's no tension built like you don't you know like i, I always look at like because i write horror movies too and i always look at it much like comedy where it's like you set up the scares the scare is the punchline you know what i mean and you build to yeah it. you know and so much of these like especially it the first one i haven't seen the second one i will go and see it though before i before well, the second I one i would shreds. argue just my opinion isn't as good as the first one really yeah. see there, it's and even the first one it's just jump scares like i knew i wasn't gonna like it in the very beginning when the kid is reaching into this uh into the storm drain and all of a sudden you see its face his mouth opens up wide he's got all these teeth it's like this is the first five minutes of the movie and you just showed me everything yeah like you didn't build any of that like i two scary eyes in the dark at the very beginning that early are way more then my imagination fills in the blanks okay and makes it more <clears throat> scary and then you build to that and if you want to turn him into like a cgi freak at the end go for it but but build to it, earn it. You know what Interesting. I mean? Interesting. See, I, I loved it. I loved every part of it. One, I thought it was I'll, awesome. I'll also read. I movies can't get apart. enough. I can't get enough of the clown. I'm like, show me Pennywise always. See, I, <laughs> I'm like a, I'm like a, a purist in like the building. Like Hitchcock is like one of my favorite directors, yeah. and he's all about tension. You know what I mean? Like it's always just about building, building, building. Um, and so I'm like a stickler for that. My uh, movie opinions are funny though, because it's like I'll say that I that Inglorious Bastards is like one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Not okay. Pastures, not which, one of the oh, worst. No, I love that movie. No, yeah. not one of the worst. The Hateful Eight. Like I, I'm very all over the map with yeah. Quentin Tarantino. But I'll be like, I'll rip Inglorious Bastards apart, and then people will be like, Well, he hate Inglorious Bastards. Like, no, no, I didn't hate it. I yeah. thought it was okay. I just ripped it to pieces. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I just shredded it. Yeah. There was just stuff about it. That you should start me. like a movie <clears throat> website where like you post like your reviews on these I things because you uh, know a lot of. Although I will say, you just reference. You did a a buzzword for me. I don't see what is the problem with a jump scare. I so and the definition of a jump scare is that it's uh, it's easy. It's just to go like Buh! like you know, it's just making a loud noise at the right time, and people think that that counts as like a worthy fear of of some kind of other fear. But yeah, that's those things happen in your house. Like if you were just in bed and you heard like a slap on your door, that's that's a, that's scary. That, sure. Like in real life, those are scary. <clears throat> I think I I appreciate a jump scare in like in a movie. Like you can use them and they're very effective. Like tools Friday to the kind 13th, of. All jump scares. Sure, but there's also like Friday the 13th, there's like this weird thing going on where you don't really know who's doing all this. You know what I mean? Like there's no real enemy to be afraid of. It could be one of the camp kids it could be you know somebody yeah. from the woods it could no, be somebody like i'm saw saying like when, they, when someone gets stabbed or hit with an axe or any of those sure. things you hear Dee! like that like the music gives you a light right. or like when the lightning strikes and the whole woods light up you hear like Dee! like it's those are jump yeah. scares right for sure. just gets you yeah yeah i think the scares that i like better are the ones where you leave and it stays with you like for okay. me like it like it was done and it was like that movie for me it just wasn't balanced either it was like it was like 30 minutes of Goonies and then like five minutes of Nightmare on Elm Street and then <laughs> 40 minutes of Goonies and then two minutes of, you know, Friday the 13th. And that it just wasn't, right. it just kind of like jumped around with the tone too. It just didn't work. That said, the scares that were in it were really well done. Like right. when he crawls out of the projector screen, yeah. I, sh oh, I shit my pants. Yeah. I was just like, like, that uh, is terrifying. When yeah. the boy's in the water in the basement and he's that like, uh, scary. you'll yeah. float too, you'll float too. And then he just spikes the boy like it was like a puppet. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh my God, it yeah, was, was so scary. scary. I didn't yeah, like that. That, was, that was tough. <laughs> the problem I had with it too, um, the new one, 
And the problem that I had with it, uh, the second part of the TV series that they also did, mm -hmm. is it's too confusing to try to figure out which kid is the, is adult. the adult. Yeah, yeah. So I spend so much of my brain going, wait, which one is this one? Like, <laughs> it's it's too much of my brain. Well, and even in like it works in the book that you have that many characters, but in a movie in general, it's like, man, like this is so much to keep track of well, right luck, now. I was like, like, okay, good. I know who the black one is. Like, I <laughs> yeah. think, like I could put that. I know that there's the one with the glasses, and, and then the girl. there's the girl, and then there's, and then the there's like four. the funny one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, those are the three that are easy to remember. Although, do you really believe Seth Green would grow up to be that hairy guy from uh, from Night Court? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's his name? He died, so I shouldn't talk too bad about him, yeah, but he's like the yeah. most unfunny man um, in America. He was like the magician. Not J not John Ritter, was it? No, 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 it's not John Ritter. It's like Harry... Um, I remember from Night Court, yeah. Yeah, he was like the lead. The, he's never said a funny thing in his life, and he was like a successful comedian and magician. But like, so like, oh, Seth Green was the funny kid. We'll make this oh, guy the funny, uh, an older version of him. Like that, they don't look they, anything they look alike. Nothing alike. That's... They have different humor. Like it was yeah. like the weirdest thing. I yeah, know. I like the the original series. I actually like that first one. Really scared me. I mean, I watched it when I was a kid, but even then, it was like Tim Curry was a really good. We rewatched it. Uh, before we went and saw it, me and Justin and Devo, and we didn't have to do that. We found out you didn't even no. have to do that. They were just remaking it. They yeah, were. Yeah. It's not like it's you know that wasn't even important to it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I thought it was way too long, way too corny. Didn't make sense. But every time Tim Gurry was Pennywise was on, I was scared. It's He's very scary. scary. He's, He's a good really scare. really scary. Yeah, I haven't seen it too right now because one of the other problems I have, with, like I love a series. Yeah, Like, I love sitting down and binge watching a series and, like, getting after it and really getting in deep. I don't want my movies to be a binge experience. I don't want to sit there for three hours in a movie that's theater. The it's future, too yeah. much time. It's like, Even come Doctor on, Sleep man, I got like, stuff to do. Doctor Sleep was two and a half hours, and that See, was no previous, no The anymore. hardest part about that for me is going to going to a theater now is like, okay, I have to pick a time on the scheduled times that I can see it. And then I have to have the rest of my day clear. Like yeah. that's, that's a lot. It's, that's the beauty of the road though. I got, sure. I'll wake up at like noon I, and I'll be like, all right, I've got eight hours. That's what I appreciated. <laughs> what am I going to appreciate it of a uh, zombie land is, is, Oh, this is a good old 90 minute flick. That oh, yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, in and out. Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen it Which yet. Good. I could he imagine that. Twice. Being, but... So that's Me? technically, nice. didn't you see it twice? No. Hmm. Who did I know? Oh, JC saw it twice. Yeah, JC saw it twice. Not I was going to say, yeah, because JC was like, uh, he's like, yeah, it had only been out for like a week and he saw it twice. Like, <laughs> yeah. how is that possible? He goes, well, I was bringing a girl and like, I didn't want to get her watch some scary thing. So I was just like, screw it. Let's just see this again. I knew she'd like it. That's yeah. funny. I've done that with my ex because we would like have a conversation about seeing a movie. And it was one of those things where every time a movie would come on that we'd want to see, she'd be like, I want to see that. And I'd be like, oh, me too. And then I'd go and see it. And she'd be like, you watch that without me? I was I like, know. I can't watch every movie with you. Like, you work during the day. I don't. Yeah. I have time. Like, I can't watch every movie with you. So there was a bunch of times where I'd go and see the movie, and then she'd bring it up later. Like, oh, we can go and see this movie. And I'd be like, damn it. Yeah. And so I'd have to go and see it Just again. Just another thing and I don't miss about relationships. And you pretend that I pretend the first that I hadn't seen it. That like, it was my first oh, time. Oh, whoa, so that like, was crazy. I don't know if we want to see that one, babe. Just I heard <laughs> it's really bad. Like, Just I heard it's really, really bad. I don't miss about relationships. Yeah. Oh, my God. No, I know. <laughs> I was that, talking like, to somebody about this the other day where it's like, all, I'm single and I'm happily single. Right. Like, and everybody that I know who's older is like, don't worry, man. Sometimes you just got to stop looking. It's like, no, I have. I am stopped I, looking. I did stop looking. And I'm, yeah. I'm actually, it's not a ploy. It's not a trick. It's not a trap. It's Trust no me. manipulation. I just don't want to be bothered. You're preaching to the choir. Like, That's a pretty nice thing. My, my girlfriend alone. does not really enjoy TV or movies. Yeah. So I just have the, I have the freedom to do whatever I want. I love whenever someone tries to tell me how their situation is different and they go, well, that's the beauty of my girlfriend. She lets me do like, you know, she understands that I have comedy first. And then a week later, they're like, dude, <laughs> I like, can't she's, do that. Oh, yeah, she's, we yeah. broke up. Like, she's <laughs> like, dude, really upset with me for doing that And I that get game. it. Yeah. If, if I'm a woman, I totally, I would be just like you. I would say, <laughs> hey, I, stop ignoring me. Stop only wanting to hang out with your friends. Stop. You should make time for me. I get why I'm not an ideal partner. I, mean, I get it, but also that's why I'm not doing it. <laughs> sure, I I'm very much like I know why I moved to LA. Yeah, I yeah. moved to LA to get into the this the entertainment industry because I think I'm awesome. Like I yeah. think I'm awesome, and I want to share my awesomeness with the world. And it takes a lot of work to do yeah. that. Like it takes a lot of work to be in this industry. It takes a lot of like commitment, time. I mean, it's your whole life. Yeah, yeah. and it's really hard to balance that with a relationship. Well, here's just a flaw of humans in general. 
A flaw of humans in general is that they believe they can have their cake and eat it too. And if they came up with some special circumstance or formula, then they can have cake and eat it too. But you can't. You don't get a great boyfriend who really loves you and respects you, and then all you post is slutty photos of yourself on the internet. And your whole Instagram is just you pushing your tits together in bikini. <laughs> you don't get both. If you'd like a man who like values you and respects you, maybe post some photos of your guys' relationship together or get sure. the fuck off Instagram. At the old you patch. don't get both it just doesn't work you can't be married and then also have like young guys always pursuing you and giving you attention and buying yeah. you drinks and taking you things and in the same way like i don't get to have a career where i'm doing all these things and i'm going to all these fun events and all this different stuff and then also get kids like right that's not how no. it works kids take a tremendous amount of time and if right. you're going to be a so, good dad big commitment i can't be out like drinking at bars and being at comedy <laughs> yeah. clubs till 2 a.m and sure. i can't but there's plenty of comics no 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 like no i, I have kids and i still and you're like, yeah, and you're a shit dad. You're a shitty dad. <laughs> Not a man. Or a pretty absent comedian. Like, we think yeah. you just disappear for six months at a time. But they all think, well, why can't I be the CEO of a company and have three kids? Well, that's not how it works, Cheryl. You Like, you being a, a CEO is exhausting. And you, you're going to either be a shitty mom or never be a CEO. I mean, I'm happy. Like, my whole thing is like limit responsibilities like yeah. i just don't want to have that many things to worry about like and especially like you know there's just a lot like i'm I'm sensitive <laughs> girls can be mean yeah like they can be really mean sometimes <laughs> and guy like yeah. obviously people can just be mean but i'm really nice so like i've ended up in relationships with people where i'm just like oh my god i feel like you're mad at me all the time they're like i'm not mad i'm just being rude <laughs> it's like right. i know like, but i don't that want sucks. that <laughs> yeah. that makes me feel bad because yeah. you, you're just you're just rude when you're happy why don't do that <laughs> you must be mad it's you nice to upset. not be in a it's fight like, well i'm not mad at you i'm mad at you know everyone else but you know you <laughs> are standing here and so you're gonna get it yeah. that's not good <laughs> that's no it's no terrible bueno. Too sensitive. I, I just don't think I can handle it. I'm just, I, and that's one of those things is like people, especially in relationships, they're like, don't worry, you'll find someone. It's like, no, I don't want to. Yeah, quit trying to push that's that like, on me. That's yeah. my, that's what I am don't want. I yeah. would be really upset if I met someone right now and I was like, damn it, I can't live without her. Damn it. Like, well, oh, don't worry, my you plans won't. are going out the window. I know, I won't. <laughs> Dude, that's what's funny about like stand up is like that. Like, I'll do it like, literally 15 minute chunk about this subject about like how like happy I am and I'm in a good circumstance I feel at peace I don't feel like I need another human to be happy like I'm good I'm just because you're not in a relationship doesn't mean you're alone there's yeah. I have no. fr you have tons of people in sure. your life and then almost like clockwork after the show someone goes you should meet my friend uh, so and so <laughs> she's single also Dude, did you not hear just the 15 minutes about how <laughs> if I meet her, then I'm not single anymore, dum yeah. dum. Then neither is she. Like we're yeah. both like And uh, even just like the whole like I haven't been on a date in so long. Oh, so I have. Long. I've been on a bunch of dates. Well, and I did go out like I like met up with somebody for drinks recently and and it wasn't like a date date, but it was kind of a date. Right. Like I was like, "Oh, let's hang out and grab a drink." And we met up and the whole time I was sitting there like, "Oh god." Oh my God. Like this is, uh, it's too, I'm not. It's too much. Uh, it's yeah, too yeah. much. This is too, this is too much commitment. And all we're doing is talking and having a drink. That's yeah. it. But I'm yeah. already like, oh God. She's like, oh, do you like movies? It's like, yeah, but I don't want to go to any. I don't want to go to any. I don't want to go on any trips, no vacations. I don't want to meet any family. That's I just, hilarious. I just, you know, like. That's just funny. drink your drink and <laughs> yeah. and people, I'll drink mine and then we'll go away from each other. People and, love to feel kept, you know. They love to feel like, oh, that's mine. I, sure. Where I'm not, you know. And I spend plenty of time with women. I love being out with women and doing things. But like the second they need to be like, no, I'm the only. Like I can't. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> checking, I and I'm just gonna out. like I can already see where I can already see you being upset with me. Oh yeah. Well, and also like I think and like this is fun. Why are we ruining this? Yeah. Like, why are we ruining just hanging out with each other and getting to know each other and having great conversations? And and if you want to have sex with me, that'd be great, too. We're going to do that. But, like, why are we ruining what we've already... Why, why make it that thing that all my friends hate and all their girlfriends hate? And, like, it's a fleeting inevitability of, like, you getting pissed off at me. I did have a situation recently with a buddy who was, like... And I was going through some stuff, so I was just kind of, like, you know, having a moment where I was, like, man, I feel like I did it all wrong. And he's, like, got a wife and kids and... 
doing the, you know, the normal thing. Yeah. What you're supposed to do yeah. as a human. And I was like, I feel like I should have done that. I feel like the window's closing. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I kind of feel like I missed out. <laughs> window's then, like, closing. Then, I know. It was, I was having a moment. I'm telling you. I was, <laughs> I was emoing out. I was just yeah. like, window's closing. Yeah. Doors are slamming. What window? You can't have babies know. now. I don't know why I'm crawling in and out of windows anyways. What, what yeah. do I care? <laughs> um, I'll use the door. Uh, but... He was like, you know, I was kind of confiding him about all this. And then like a week later, he was living on my couch, just like depressed. It's all falling yeah. apart. It's all falling apart. It's the worst. He's like, now do you wish that, do you yeah. think I did it right? Yeah. He's like, no, I don't. No, <laughs> famous, I did it right. I win. Famous po- Jeff Dye Friendship Podcast conversation and quote is, you know, you, you're you going to be lonely on the holidays if you're single. You're going to be very lonely. It's going to be very depressing. And then the rest of your year is way better. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> That's, That's how I look good. at it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, just get a handle of whiskey. Yeah, you'll avoid have. guns for about a two week <laughs> period. Buy and yourself some nice Christmas presents. Great. <laughs> the rest of the year, we're home free, <laughs> jet skis and bikinis. Um, thanks for being on here, dude. Yeah, I, dude. I could talk. I want to have you back. I want. We have so many things we didn't talk about. Um, anytime, man. Yeah, anytime. We'll I talk about your it. penis movie. Yeah, that's what I wanted about, to talk about. I it, mean, but we don't have time. I, that's a great tease, though. You know what I mean? You gotta come back. Penis movie. It's got a penis movie. We actually. Actually, okay. me and my brother are talking about trying to purchase the rights to it and then re-putting it out, but with the with the facts out there, setting the record straight. That'd be great. I know. How so, much would those rights be? I don't know, but I think I could get it out of these. There was this German company that made it, so they own it right now. But well, here's the thing: just do it, and then just peace. just do it and say, "Well, what are you going to do? Yeah, you can assume you made a fraudulent documentary. We're making a real documentary about how your documentary wasn't real. We can <laughs> edit that out gone. if you don't want that out. No, it's fine. But here's the thing." Then they can't sue you. No, no. And you can make like, a documentary. You don't need the rights to a thing. Sure. If you're saying, "Oh, I just want to buy the film back and re-release it," because right now people can't see it, and still, it is what it is. It's a project that I'm really proud of. It's okay. called Unhung Hero. You can kind of I've peek seen around, it. but awesome. we'll talk about we'll yeah. talk about the details of it another time. But it is it's a project I'm very proud of. But it is a very confusing God, project. Well, and me and my girlfriend, understand. me and my girlfriend at the time watched it, enjoyed every minute of it. And then afterwards, we just looked at each other. And we we're like, we're so worried about Pat. We're like, oh, why no. would he do that? <laughs> why would he make that movie? <laughs> like we were like, I so, told like, you, I'm like, down for whatever. This if you've could... got projects out there, I'm down. I don't even need to hear Dude, about. I can't wait. Give me a call. I can't, I can't wait to hear about this. Just I love it. Call sheet. I'll be there. I love a cliffhanger. We'll That's have him good. back real soon. He's he lives cool. around, you know. And this is the Jeff Dye Friendship Podcast. Thanks, brother. Yeah, thank you guys. This uh, is fun. You got anything to plug? How people find you? Um, let's see. Yeah, at Pat Moot on Instagram and Twitter. Um, nice. I'm doing some work with a nonprofit too called At Fight CRC. So check cool. them out because nice. they're doing some really good stuff. And I'll be posting about doing stuff with them, doing comedy. Um, we got to get uh, your brother back to the Seattle side. You know, I know. he's so Atlanta Ugh, side. All these he's sports. Very, watching him. It's tough. He's very Atlanta. It's very. It's funny tough. though. Now it's like any city he goes to, he goes and buys a hat. He's got like. Oh, actually, yeah. uh, he's like. He's like. Yeah, it's great he gets, stadium. He gets I'm very a... defensive about that. Or yeah. no, I mean, I started that problem. I'd always buy him a hat sure. no matter where. We went. But no, but he gets very defensive when we tease him about like when he went to Boston. He was like all oh, Celtics, everything, and then like he'd only been in Boston for like a few months, and he was like all oh, Boston. Yeah. And he's like, no, I just like Ray Allen. And you're like, dude, you're <laughs> at the Celtics games. I mean, yeah. it was like he went to St. Louis and he got like a St. Louis hat, and he was like, the stadium is pretty sweet it's like so you're a fan of the stadium now that's a dream fan. i mean sure he gets fine. real upset when we tease him about this yeah because then he went to atlanta he was like mr i have a dominic wilkins jersey because I, I know that said, that said i am I, I if i had to pick an nba team right now it would probably be the hawks i think they're fun I think that's where we get a pass though but also there i worked i was in atlanta worked yeah. with them a little bit and you know it's nba we don't have, we a, don't team. have, a, team. Yeah, we don't have a team that's why i picked the lakers because yeah, we get a free ride you know free, i was yeah, clippers pass. for a while and then lakers but i can't believe we've lived in LA i got a free pass to pick any sports team and i picked the Atlanta Hawks. Okay. What an idiot. I know. <laughs> Stupid. You, you yeah, I chose too good. soon. I chose poorly. I chose the uh, Clippers because, just, and I actually wasn't even that big of a fan. I would just had season tickets. That counts. But I wasn't, like, even, like, when I would go to the games, I wouldn't wear their stuff. I would just kind of sit there. And, yeah. And yeah. everyone's like, you like Clippers? I'm like, yeah, they're okay. Like, they're, I guess they'd say they're my team. Yeah. But now I'm all in on these lakes. Oh, they're fun. Oh, I, like, I like both, but I'll go Lakers over Clippers when they play. I like but that, I, but I like both. Yeah, that's I'll, I'll take. That's what I'll be. I mean, that's the same as mine. Yeah, we're like Harry Carey. You know, yeah. he liked the Cubs and the White Sox. Yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Um, anything to plug, Tony Bear? Uh, no, just follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I am Tony Revis, so you can stay up to date what I'm doing there. 
Nice. And you know where to find me, guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, This week, I'm in Chicago at Zany's all weekend in Old Town. And then on Friday and Saturday, I'm in Rosemont. Uh, But it's all Chicago. It's all easy to find. But I like to do both sides. Like I said, Chicago, White Sox, and Cubs. I'm doing the Cubbies Wednesday through (laughs) Wednesday through Thursday. And then I'm on the south side for uh, White Sox on Friday, Saturday. I love you guys. Thanks for listening. Uh, We out. Friendship. How about that episode? I told you you'd love Pat Moon. Silly, fun little guy. Love him to death. I didn't mean little, but he's, you know, he's littler than me and Tony. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. I love you guys. Like I said, if you want to subscribe to my Patreon, go to patreon.com slash Jeff Die. And uh, just hit subscribe for a small fee. You get uh, you get to free comedy club tickets. You also get to watch each episode of the podcast. Also, a perk of the of the Patreon is it's the easiest way to directly click or uh, connect with me. <coughs> Almost just died. <coughs> Anyways, if you Facebook me or if you Instagram me or if you Twitter me, <laughs> you're pro- I'm probably not going to see it. But Patreon goes directly to my cell phone, and directly, um, I see those messages immediately, I see those comments immediately, it completely goes to me, and that's the best way to connect with me, which is the whole point of Patreon, is that you get your investing in me, and I I appreciate that you're investing in me, so I make a point to reply with you and interact with you, if you want. Uh, We love you guys, thanks for listening. Join us next week on episode 84.